Welcome to the video on Revision Worksheet 17. So this Revision Worksheet contained one question. It was the 2014 uh, Paper 1, Section B, Question 9. So uh, this question was an exponential functions question. So it was a really, um, it was a really good question. It contained um, a lot of the elements that we see with the exponential questions, including the use of logs. Um, it also then had a little bit of calculus thrown in towards the end, um, which was, I suppose, it was straightforward and it was nice. So there was a few little um, parts of this question that were a little bit tricky, so let's work through it now. So Kieran is preparing food for his baby and he must use cooled boiled water. So the equation y is equal to a e to the power of kt describes how boiled water cools. In this equation, t is the time in minutes. So we can write that. And y is the difference between um, so y is the difference between uh, water temperature and room temperature at time t. A and k are constants. Um, the temperature of the water when it boils is 100 degrees. And then it tells us that room temperature is a constant 23 degrees Celsius. So that's important. That caused a lot of uh, confusion for people. Uh, so write down a value. Uh, for the temperature difference y when the water boils and find a value for a. So when the water boils it's going to be 100 degrees minus the room temperature 23 degrees which gives us 77. Okay so that's our difference. So then to work out a we go to our equation and say y is equal to a e to the power of kt. So when the water boils and um, we know that y is 77 we don't know what a is and um, e then is power k and t. So the time when the water boils is zero. So look at the, again, the first bullet point up above. It says t is the time in minutes from when the water is boiled. So when we boil the water, no time has passed. So we get 77 is equal to a e to the power of zero. And remember that anything to the power of zero is just one. So we get a is equal to 77. So after five minutes, the temperature of the water is 88 degrees Celsius. Find a value of k correct to three significant figures. So again, we have y is equal to, now instead of a, I have 77, e to the power of kt. So they said here that t is equal to 5, and we want to figure out our y, which is going to be the 88, minus 23. Now be careful, a lot of people, a lot of students at this point took the 88 away from 100. So remember that y is the temperature difference between the current temperature of the water and room temperature. So that gave us 65. So we end up with 65 equals 77 e to the power of k times 5. So we have 65 is equal to 77 e to the power of 5k. Now, um, we want to get the e or the exponential part on its own. So we'll have 65 divided by 77 is equal to e to the power of 5k. Now, can't work it like that. So what we're going to instead use is our log to base e of 65 over 77 is equal to 5k. So what I'll get, I'll just flip this around, 5k is equal to, now remember that the log to base e is the natural log, so just for ease and for putting it into the calculator, we'll leave it as ln, and to make it as accurate as possible, I would actually leave it as 65 over 77, and then divide my whole answer by 5, and we'll put that straight into the calculator. So when you put that into the calculator as is, we should get minus 0 0.33388. Now it asks us to round three significant figures. So we have one, two, three significant figures there, which brings us to minus 0 0.03. 
three, nine. So uh, significant figures is not the same thing as decimal points. What significant figures means in non-zero numbers. So if a zero appears before, so at the front or at the end, they're not counted as significant. However, if a zero appears in between two numbers, then it is considered significant. So we get minus 0 0.0339 is the value for K, correct three significant figures. So Kieran prepares food for his baby when the water is cooled to 50 degrees. How long does it take, correct the nearest minute, for the water to cool to this temperature? So now our formula is looking a little bit more complete. We have 77 e to the power of minus uh, 0 0.0339. T. Now we do know our y is going to be 50 minus 23 which gives me 27 and we're trying to work out t. So 27 is equal to 77 e to the power of minus 0 0.0339 t. Just like in the previous part we want to get the exponential part on its own so we have minus 0 0.0339 t. So I do log to base E of 27 over 77 is equal to minus 0 0.0339T. Um, again, I'm just going to flip it just to make it a bit easier. 339T is equal to, remember log to base E is ln 77. And to make it easier, I'm just going to put it into my calculator all together. 77. All of this then divided by minus 0 0.0339, which gives us t is equal to 30.8, sorry, 30.9 minutes. Um, and they want to correct the nearest minute. So my time is equal to 31. So then it says, using your values for a and k, sketch a curve, f of t is equal to a e to the power of kt between 0 and 100. So this is the function, it should actually be equal to a, which is 77, e to the power of minus 0 0.0339t. So for just like any function, what we're going to do is create um, a table with our values. So here's our table. So t goes from 0 to 110, which we're just following the graph for. Uh, we then put it into the function, which is 77 e to the power of minus 0 0.0339 times t. We then work out a value for y. Now, when I've actually created my point, I've left it to whole numbers because it is just a sketch and we won't be able to get a huge amount of accuracy. So every box is five. So I think once you can get it to the nearest number, you'll be doing really well. So you can see the rounding that's happening there. So now let's put it onto our graph. So your graph should look something like this. So there's my f of t. So I have my points there in blue for 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So just again, be aware that um, we have that nice decreasing exponential shape. And the reason it's a decreasing exponential is because the power is negative. So we have a minus 0 0.0339 multiplying by time. Time is always positive, so what we'll get is always a negative number there in our power. So on the same diagram, sketch a curve g of t is equal to a e m to the power of m t, showing that the water cooling at a faster rate, where a is the value from part a and m is a constant. Label each graph clearly and suggest one possible value for m for the sketch that you've drawn and give a reason for your choice. So this is important and um, because we're now working with this function here, g of t is equal to, now they told me the a was the same, e to the power of mt. Now that means I'm going to start at the 77 point here as well. So let's get rid of all this. So my point is the same point here. 
and effectively what's going to happen is it's going to come down a lot quicker and it's going to come along and flatten here so we get something like that now again a bit shaky because I'm drawing it on the computer but effectively what you want is any decreasing exponential curve that's sitting in underneath our current uh, function that implies that it is um, it is cooling at a faster rate so what we want um, with regard to value then is any m that is less than k will be valid. So remember my k now is minus 0 0.0339. So for example, you could take your m and say minus 0 0.05. That's absolutely perfect. So that's the value we can suggest. And it's really about understanding um, that it's a number that's less than. So um, and remember that it's already a negative. So the smaller the negative number it's actually going to look bigger so it's 0 0.05 but it's a negative 0 0.05 there so when you draw that just don't forget to label it very clearly your gt then as well so it says find the rates of change for the function f of t after one minute after 10 minutes so we have this function f of t which is 77 e to the power of minus 0 0.0339 now when we get a rate of change we differentiate whatever we have with respect to time with respect to t since this function is already in t so since t is actually our variable all we're actually doing here is differentiating f of t okay so we're doing f dash of t and when you do that so if you remember your rules of integrating um, exponentials and if you don't they are in your log tables and we're looking at page 25 so you bring down the power and um, we still already have 77 e to the power of minus 0 0.0339 t um, and that's it there's no change to the exponential itself so when we clean that up we get minus 2.6103 e to the power of minus 0 0.0339 t. Now, they asked us to do that when t was 1. So we're going to sub in a 1 here. 3 e to the power of minus 0 0.0339 times 1, which gives us minus 2.52. And they also asked us to do it when um, t was 10. So for that, we get minus 2.6103 e to the power of minus 0 0.0339 times 10 and that equals minus 1.86 so a uh, very straightforward question there with our rates of change and um, so what we're talking about is differentiating what we currently have which was our y so differentiating our y with respect to t so dy dt so differentiating our y or our function with respect to time the last part of this question is show that the rate of change of f of t will always increase over time. Now, so the best way to show about whether it is increasing or decreasing is using our second derivative. So if we second, if we use the second derivative, so I'm just again put my first derivative back up here so we have it. Remember that that was 2.6103 e to the power of minus 0 0.0339 times t. And what we do again is we bring down our power of minus 0. 0.0339 times minus 2.6103 e to the power of minus 0 0.0339 t. So we differentiate the power and bring it down in front. However, there is no change to the e itself. So what we end up getting here is actually positive, sorry, 0 0.088 e to the power of minus 0 0.0339 t. Now, what we would say is this is definitely uh, greater than zero because t will always be positive, but um, we have basically got this part here, which is going to be greater than zero um, since e is greater than zero. And this part here is also greater than zero. So if I do that multiply by that, it has to be greater than zero. Therefore, we would say f of t will always 
increase over time. And that's all they wanted for that part. So very straightforward calculus there at the end. Um, I think just the challenge of the why being the difference rather than a straight number. And I think the fact it was the difference between two temperatures, a lot of students mixed up um, what they were taking away. But other than that, it was a very, very straightforward question.